Good morning. Welcome to St. Francis of Assisi, American National Catholic Church. Today we are celebrating the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. And happy Labor Day to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. And our entrance hymn for today is number 530, Table of Plenty. So let's all arise and greet our celebrant, Bishop George, and join together and sing number 530. To feast of heaven and earth, come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. Come and sit at my table where saints and sinners are friends. I wait to welcome the lost and lonely. Glory to God, glory in the highest, 
God shed praise to his name, whose name is the Lord. guest 
that you may have been invited by him, and the host who invited both of you may approach you and say, Give your place to this man, and then you will proceed with embarrassment to take the lowest place. Rather, when you are invited, go and take the lowest place, so that when the host comes to you, he may say, My <coughs> friend, move up to a higher position, then you will enjoy the esteem of your companions at the table. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Then he said to the host who invited him, When you hold a lunch or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your wealthy neighbors in case they may invite you back and you have repayment. Rather, when you hold a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. Blessed indeed will you be because of their inability to repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Uh, I couldn't help but to think uh, about these readings um, and the humility that is suggested to us in terms of sometimes my lack of my own humility. And I was thinking that the girls had come home uh, with some homework. And uh, I think it was algebra or geometry. I don't know what made me think that I could do it. But I thought, oh, I can do this. And I was doing it. And I thought, wait, this is really easy. This is not as bad as I remember it. And I was so very proud of myself, and uh, and uh, and I, I, I think it was alone. She looked a little skeptically, uh, but anyway, she took it to class, and it came back um, with so much red on it. It looked like someone led a finger with a little note asking me never to help again. <laughs> and I thought, great, right? Those things which I kind of want to show forth my skills, right? By the way, I have no I, I have no skills with mathematics that I can add and subtract as, as, as far as I go. But I was thinking about how these readings today might suggest to us a virtue that really does keep us uh, in a relationship and communion with each other in healthy ways sometimes, right? Uh, uh, my aunts always used to say to me, not to get too big for my britches, right? And I think that that was a warning about how pride goes before a fall. We know this in many ways. Uh, we've all experienced it. We have all experienced mis misunderstanding a particular situation in which we thought maybe we were being singled out for some great honor, when in fact we were not being singled out for that in any honor at all. I, uh, I remember being called to Mother Regina Mercedes' uh, 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 office because I thought I was getting the religion award uh, in, uh, in seventh grade. And uh, I had discovered, uh, much to my chagrin, that she had caught me smoking. And that there, was no, there was absolutely no reward coming today. But I was, I was uh, busting at the seams that I was going to get this award, uh, which I usually got. It was the only one I ever got. But in any case, uh, uh, I didn't get it that year. And I was demoted from captain of the safeties, uh, which I used to, because I got to yell in the middle of the hallway, 1A, 1B, and I got to ring the bell very loudly. But in a very public way, I was no longer doing so I think that Jesus is reminding us, all of the scriptures today are reminding us, this reading from Sirach comes from the wisdom literature of the Old Testament, and it really is a very loving kind of dialogue between a parent and, 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 and the parent and the child, to be careful about how we see ourselves, to somewhat stay right-sized, right? And, and we hear in this reading that humility is more prized than any gift that we can ever give. And so I was thinking about that, about, about the quality of humility, which in its essence might be the willingness on our part to give up our own self-assertion, the willingness on our part to give up our own sense of self-righteousness. And maybe that's the element, the essence of humility. And so, so that one of the ways that we can, uh, I think, enter into that experience is, is to see all things as gift, to see all things as given to us as gift, because when we are grateful, we cannot be otherwise than humble. Right? And so it's in the experience of our own frailty, in the experience of our own humanity, that sometimes invites us into this sense of ourself 
to stay right sized in relationship to to uh, to God and to each other. It's a it's a really is a, a, an admirable quality, isn't it? And and I think that in many cases we all do. We're all told not to toot our own horn. We're all told these things, and and sometimes you know we, 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 sometimes we, we we try to attend to that. But the reality is is to sometimes even give it out when it is due us. There's an element of humility in that, right? And so so that's amazing. The reading from Hebrews, uh, I think it does speak about this wonderful gift that we are given in the New Covenant. It says in days gone by, right, that, uh, that God's word came with, uh, with strum and drum, right? That there was a fear of God in some way, so, so that the people were saying, don't talk to us anymore, please, because we don't know what you're going to ask from us or what you're going to want from us, right? But then in this New Covenant, all that is required of us really is this experience of allowing ourselves to be loved allowing ourselves to see, uh, see ourselves as lovable in the eyes of God. I am often fond in, in my homilies with you, my discussions of speaking about at, at Compline, which is the last prayer that, uh, that religious and uh, priests are obligated to, at the end of the day, there's a beautiful antiphon which says, keep us, O God, as the apple of your eye. And it's this sense that we are the apple of God's eye, that humility allows us to see ourselves as human beings loved by this God in all of the moments of our life. Not just when we're good, right? Not when we're just doing the right thing, but in each and every single moment of our life. And so, so this humility that, uh, that leads us to be here with each other in gentle ways also supports us in, in moving closer to this experience of God's love for us. So, so this reading from Hebrews really does, uh, I, I love the language, it's almost poetic in, in Hebrews in many ways, right? That, that, uh, that, the, that this covenant, this love of God speaks more eloquently that even the blood sprinkled by evil. And what an amazing, what an amazing use of the word eloquent. It really is. And then finally in the gospel, this, this gospel from Luke, again, when we had the, the, the gospel of Luke uh, uh, in church uh, uh, to be read publicly, what we really are hearing, each of the gospels has its own theology. And the gospel of Luke is very much concerned with presenting this Jesus who comes to us as Messiah, who has a real, um, um, almost a uh, social upheaval. Uh, Jesus comes to challenge the institution. Those of us who have challenged institutions might find a resonance in this Jesus, right? That we, we take a stand or, or we're so convicted. And so, so, so Luke is, is moving forward this Jesus who, who is a member of this institution and from within it challenges them to think about what the Torah is saying. How is this meaningful for us here and now? Vatican II invited us into thinking about that. All of what we do here at St. Francis, hopefully we think about how this living word of God moves in real ways in our lives as well. And so Jesus, he's aware at some level that he's developing a bit of a reputation for being a rabble rouser. And so the people are watching him. They're, they're, they're watching to see what he is doing. This, uh, this gospel, Jesus would have, uh, as we know, he was a rabbi, he was a knowledgeable Jew. And so this idea of table fellowship in first century Jerusalem was very important. Who you ate with um, uh, defined your social status, right? They defined your social status. And, and so that Jesus being invited to the Pharisee's uh, table would have suggested that the Pharisee was seeing Jesus as an equal. And if you were invited to someone who had a higher status than you, then that elevated your status in society. So this was not, Jesus was not unaware of this. Many people probably refused invitations because if you were invited, that meant you were obligated to do something back, right? And so it could become a very costly kind of uh, 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 obligation if you accepted an invitation. So Jesus was very much aware of this was the social norm that we only eat with people who are like us, or who are better than us, or who we think are better than us, right? And so, so we know how that goes sometimes, right? So we know how that goes. So Jesus is said begins a parable, and a parable is an invitation for us to think about something. I'm telling you a story that at its roots has some message for us. And so Jesus uses this literary device. He tells a story, and most of the time when we hear Jesus telling a parable, there is a point to that parable. And in many cases in the Gospel of Luke, it is to call up uh, some concerns about the hypocrisy of the institution. And none of us like that. 
parables often hold a mirror to us and to the people that Jesus is sharing the parable with. And, and, and it is here in the same way. So he tells this parable. And he warns, right, that we should seek the lowest place because maybe when the host comes and says, no, no, come, uh, come a little higher, right, rather than to take the place and be embarrassed. I love that God is concerned about our embarrassment. I love that. Jesus is often is, right? In the Gospel of John, he changes water into wine so that the bride and groom won't be embarrassed at their own wedding. This God who loves us is, is not unaware of our human frailty, I think, right? So, so we hear this. And then, and then Jesus says... Uh, he's, he knows what this means to be invited, and he says to the host, don't invite people who can repay you. Invite those people who can't repay you. And in fact, invite those people who are on the fringes of society. Invite them in, right? Uh, sit with them, eat with them. That is really Jesus' uh, table fellowship. Who did Jesus eat with, right? The prostitutes and the sinners, right? The tax collectors, those who were ostracized by society. So he's inviting this host to think a little differently. It must have been a shock to hear that. It must have been a shock to hear that. For you and I, I can't even think what that would be akin to. Perhaps it would be that maybe maybe we should invite to, to our home or to dinner uh, someone who, uh, uh, who who lives under the bridge in Newark, right? I mean, that's the, 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 the idea that this would happen uh, for a Pharisee was beyond his keen, beyond his his ability to understand that. And that's what the gospel does for us sometimes. The good news of Jesus shakes us out of our complacency. It asks us to think of what the psalm spoke to us today about this God who loves us, who makes a home for the poor, about this God who enters into relationship with the widow, the alien, and the orphan, those who are most vulnerable in our society. Because it's in that experience of our vulnerability and our fragility and, and, and our ability to accept that which is given to us as if that there is some measure of our humility. It is in the experience of us uh, knowing uh, ourselves as broken, knowing ourselves as not perfect, knowing ourselves as, uh, as still loved by God tremendously and always that allows us to receive that love with great humility. The gift for that, the, the task for that is for us to do that for each other uh, and then to receive that as well. Absolutely right. There are times, I know this, I was just sharing uh, with Father Paul and, uh, and Tony before Mass about how I'm now getting out of bed in kind of an L shape. I don't know what happened. All of a sudden my knees hurt, my back hurts. I don't know what's going on. Right? And I am always so confident in my own strength. I'm always so confident in my own ability. I am always so, so trusting in my own physicality. All of a sudden there's... Uh, things that I'm experiencing that I haven't experienced before. It is a gentle invitation into a different period of my life. And what comes along with that, hopefully, is the good and common sense of some humility, right? To reach out to others in my life, to receive from them the gifts that maybe they have always wanted to give me, but I was too strong or proud to receive that, right? And so it led me to think about this scripture. It led me to think about uh, about how God invites me and maybe you to think about those areas in my life in which I am lame, those areas of my life in which I am blind, or those areas of my life in which I am deaf. How is that? How is that a reflection uh, more of my pride than, than some dimension of humility? What is it that gets in my way, right? How am I, how am I paying attention uh, to those things in my own life, right? How do I move in different ways to understand my own need to be uh, in, in relationship and community with others and to receive all that they have to give to me graciously, right? This idea that, 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 uh, that our sense of self comes in subtle ways, right? How many times have you been driving and, uh, or somewhere and said, thank God I'm not like them. Thank God I don't have that problem. Thank God I don't do that. Scripture reminds us today that whatever any human being is capable of, so are we. And so it is a real invitation, right, into the experience of, of being fully human. St. Irenaeus of Leon said that the glory of God was the person fully alive. And so, so alive in all of our dimensions. And that's how God takes us. This morning uh, at Mass uh, at the hospital, I, uh, I have a little CD and I play some hymns. And, uh, and the communion hymn was, Just As I Am. Right? And I thought, how appropriate is this, right? Just as I am, 
Uh, that's how the God receives us, just as we are. Maybe there's an invitation uh, in this uh, virtue of humility to receive ourselves and others just as they are. Let us continue in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together we profess our faith and say we believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God not made, but in being with the Father. Through God all things are made, for us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake, he was crucified with the punch of Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in the form of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We go to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As a people, as a humble people, we present our prayers and petitions to this loving God. For the efforts of diplomats to bring peace to Syria without a wider and more destructive war, that the Spirit opened minds and hearts to find ways to end the fighting and create a just peace for all. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the American National Catholic Church, that we would conduct our affairs with humility, appreciate Proverbs, and be generous in all human. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the immigrants who, like Abraham and Sarah, sojourn in foreign lands, that they be welcomed as fellow citizens of the city whose designer and maker is God. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who live in fear because they cannot find employment, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, those who have no means and no voice in society, that the Spirit touch tongues to be their voice, we pray. Lord, Lord, Lord. Lord. For healing for the sick, especially, and for patients for their caregivers, are there any sick for whom we should especially remember? The bells of the house, for the oil, We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially all the innocent victims massacred in Syria, the God who is able to raise from the dead will grant them the fullness of life. And are there any other dead that you should especially remember and warn you? Yeah, the Draper. For these we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Join me in prayer for the couples who will gather here on Sunday and Saturday for the uh, their, uh, marriage preparation class and for the couples who will be joining them, uh, leading them in that discussion. That God may give them many years of happiness together uh, in marriage. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We give thanks today uh, to God for the life of Basilio, who celebrates his uh, birthday. And so I'm wondering if we have other birthdays today. My father's uh, birthday would have been the fifth, so we'll remember him as well. But, uh, but let's uh, join me as we sing happy birthday to Basilio. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Silvio. Happy birthday to you. We pray for Silvio. We pray for, uh, we pray for uh, all of those needs in the depths of our hearts, knowing that God hears and answers them. 
Most high and glorious God, we bring you our prayers and petitions, those which we've spoken aloud and those in the depths of our heart. We ask you to hear and answer them if they be for our good, for we make them in the name of Christ your Son. Amen. Amen. As our gifts are gathered and prepared, let us join one another and sing number 650, Prayer of St. Francis. That's number 650. <coughs> Make me a shadow of your Come to the name of the Lord. 
We offer this mass today for a peaceful resolution to the difficulties in Syria and for uh, peace in our own homes. Father, from the beginning of time, you have always done what is good for us, so that we may be holy as you are holy. Look with kindness on your people gathered here before you. Send forth the power of your spirit so that these gifts may become for us the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus the Christ, in whom we have become your children, your daughters, and your sons. When we were lost and could not find our way to you, you loved us more than ever. Jesus, your Son, innocent and without sin, gave himself into our hands and was nailed to a cross. Yet before he stretched out his arms between heaven and earth in the everlasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Paschal, the Paschal Feast in the company with those he loved. While they were at supper, he took bread, he gave you thanks and praise, he broke the bread, gave it to all of those whom he loved, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. At the end of the meal, knowing that he was to reconcile all things to himself by the blood of the cross, he took the cup filled with wine. Again, he gave you thanks and praise gave the cup to all of those whom he loved, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ will come again. Alleluia, alleluia. We do this in memory of Jesus Christ, our Passover and our lasting peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection and look for the coming of that day when he will return to give us the fullness of joy. Therefore, we offer you, God, ever faithful and true, the sacrifice which restores us to your friendship. Father, look with love on those you have called to share in the one sacrifice of Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, make them one body healed of all division. Keep us all in communion of mind and heart with the patriarchs of Alexandria, Antioch, Constantinople, Jerusalem, and Rome. I, your unworthy servant, all bishops and clergy, and the entire people your Son has gained for you. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, until at last we stand in your presence, to share the life of the saints in the company of the Virgin Mary and the Apostles, and all our departed brothers and sisters, whom we commend to your mercy. Then, freed from every shadow of death, we shall take our place in the new creation and give you thanks with Christ our risen Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Yeah, I'm sorry. 
but who have benefited from your kindness and your generosity. And that's all that Christ has ever asked us to do. So thank you all for that. Thank you very, very much for that. Um, um, it's a busy month. Any announcements? I don't know. Right, I don't know. Um, Next week, we will be uh, changing our max times back to 12 noon. So please be aware that next week we'll be here at 12, or before 12. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we come at 11, we'll say the rest. The following week will be the mass of uh, Father Paul's mass of Thanksgiving. And we will be starting a, a little late, uh, around 12.30 at the main sanctuary. The reason we have to start a little later is we need to let them finish up there. And it is really a festival mass of Thanksgiving for Father Paul. For all of our clergy who revive their priesthood, it's a really wonderful gift to them and to us again. So we'll have a great celebration. Father, Father Paul is, uh, uh, we'll have some visiting clergy. Come join us, be part of that with us, for real, right? It'd be really nice. For real, you can tell I've been talking to the girls, right? So, uh, um, 12.30, 12 Next week's at 12, the following week at 12.30. Then we go to 12 all the time. <laughs> so that should confuse you sufficiently, right? So look, look on our parish bulletin. That's where you'll know everything, right? And then the following Sunday, the 29th, is our homecoming. That's an opportunity for us as a parish to celebrate with all of those who have uh, had an encounter with us generally sacramentally. Either we have married them or we have baptized their children. In some cases, we have buried their dead. And so, uh, so for us as a, as a Catholic parish, we really do believe that, uh, that these sacraments have always belonged to you. And so we, we try at every moment to make that happen for people who want that. So I want you to know, come and celebrate that with us next week. That'll be the 29th. That'll be in the upper church as well, because we expect a larger crowd. Immediately following that is a, um, I think not to be missed, uh, 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 reception. Some of our own parish will be cooking for that, so uh, and baking. So, uh, so I think we have some wonderful talent in the parish. So come and enjoy that with us, right? Don't forget the 28th, if you can join us, we're at the Bloomfield Fest. Come by, hang out with us. You'll see our uh, booth. Dee Dee and I will be there. Uh, we have some some magnets and other things to give away, right? I think so. We also, by the way, finally, uh, our treasurer, who is uh, modestly sitting in the back a little bit, our former treasurer, I should say. Uh, has been faithfully serving us uh, for five years. Six years, Robert? Five, six? Right. Feels like an attorney. <laughs> yeah. Finally, Vincenzo has agreed to be our treasurer. Thanks. So, so luckily, I don't think I've messed up the accounts too much. Right? So, uh, so, uh, I've only paid the rent, so that's all. So, uh, uh, so, uh, so may Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us all go forth, joining together, and singing number 548, the City of God. That's number 548. Away from your slumber, arise from your sleep.